Hello. So today we're discussing How Much, a Ukrainian short film that received a grant from The Guardian and the Filmmaker Fund and is currently published on The Guardian website. We have in our studio today Alisa Kovalenko, the film director behind the film. Hello, Alisa. Hello. Uh, so can you please tell me, how did you feel when you found out that The Guardian and the Filmmaker Fund chose a team for the grant? Well, I did not expect that at all. I thought that my story was too small and too local. So I was pleasantly surprised when we received the main prize from The Guardian. After that, we spoke with Charlie, who represents The Guardian in Ukraine. And he said that girls like Alina can be found in London or in the suburbs of Paris, which makes this story so universal. Mm. And how did you find out about this girl, Alina? And why did you think that her story was interesting and worth doing a film about? Um, I came to look at the training session of the only women's football team in Kyiv, which is called Atex. I have a personal connection, as my cousin used to play football 20 years ago. So I've been fascinated by women's football for a long time. So I was visiting their training session and their coach came up to me and said, look at that girl, she's a hero. She told me about Alina's life and her difficult childhood, that she's from an orphanage. I knew straight away that it was the story for a documentary. I had no doubt that if I started making it, it would become the real deal. I planned it as a full-length film though, but we prepared a short version for The Guardian. It's a great start if you have the support. Mm. Uh, so this football team that you just mentioned that um, that Alina plays for is called Atex Kiev. In the film it says that its players, they don't get paid for games at all. So is that true? They don't have salaries at all? Yes, from time to time. Their coach, Alagres, has been working with the team for a long time. Actually, she founded it and helps the girls a lot. But it's difficult to pay salaries without sponsors. They're in constant search for sponsors. It's very hard. We know that in men's football, they pay the players millions, but women's football isn't supported much, even by the state. That's why it's a sad story. And I hope that this documentary, both long and short versions, will help find sponsors for the team. It's very hard for the girls because when they break their legs, get injuries, they have to pay for the treatment. Our coach, Ala, fundraises to help them somehow, as the operations are often expensive. Girls are forced to take jobs on the side to be able to play football like peeling vegetables and selling flowers. And when did you start making this film and how long did it take from the very beginning until it was actually released? I started working on the documentary in February 2016. It will soon be two years since then. I'm still working on it. We finished editing the full-length version. There were just some extra shootings. But in general, we worked on the version for The Guardian for a year. In February, we finished editing the short version. So when you just met Alina, um, how did it actually feel like um, to be like to learn her story? It was funny because when we visited the training session for the first time to shoot the girls, I just wanted to take a look at them, at their training, to decide who interested me. When you work in this field, you know that there are some people who the camera just loves. So I was just shooting and watching them play. When I was watching the video after that, I knew that I would be making a film about Alina, but it turned out that I had shot a lot of her even before I knew I'd be making a film about her. When I heard her story from the coach about her fate, that she's from the outskirts of Kyiv, she had a different difficult childhood and grew up without her parents, for me it became clear that she's a real hero and that she was strong enough to be the main protagonist of the documentary film. Mm. So obviously with The Guardian uploading homage to the website, the film is bound to receive a lot of views and potentially a lot of attention as well. Um, have there been any offers, maybe from some generous people who offered to help Alina and her family? Do you know how her story has developed since the film came out? I received a letter from a man from England yesterday. He offered sponsorship for the team, help for Alina and the children. It's extremely cool. I hope we receive more letters like this, because the aim of the documentary film is not only to tell the story, but also to try and help someone if they are in a difficult situation. How did the story develop? Well, actually, her story will have an even greater happy ending than what is shown in the short film, but I won't reveal this now, because we have this full-length film that we're going to show at the DocuDay festival in March. This story only ended in a logical way just recently, and by ended I mean for cinema within the hour and a half time slot.
Mm. So the full film is going to be re- to be released in March, right? At the oh, Ukraine, Festival. Festival. In Ukraine, yes. I really hope so, because this is the best and only documentary film festival. And because they backed The Guardian's project, The Guardian goes to Ukraine, so it would be logical to hold its premiere at that festival specifically. Mm-hmm. So apart from the full-length film, are you planning like to develop the story? Are there going to be any more sequels or about this girl and about addicts in general? Well, actually, this full-length film that we're finishing up now will show a more complete picture. If the short film doesn't show any other characters apart from Alina and the kids, the full-length film also depicts Alina's relatives and Alina's friend. It also shows Alina's life and what she went through in the last two years, the difficulties she lived through. For the short version of the film, we tried to tell the story very concisely and make it easy to understand in every part of the world. And of course, the short version does not allow us to tell everything. So you have to tell the story in a very dynamic way, especially when we're talking about the internet, where people do not want to watch one minute of someone not saying anything to camera. That would suit the standard film format, but I hope that people who watch the short film become interested in watching the full-length version. We're also thinking of doing a project with Current TV, which would be a series of documentary films about girls from different teams, their different stories. That would be like a TV series with new episodes every month. Every month, a new little story story would come out because we have 10 different women's football teams in the Premier League. For me, women's football is a miracle concept. If you look at these girls who don't receive millions like Ronaldo and Messi, but they play with such passion and you see that not only do they fight for football or want to perform well, for them it's also a kind of game of life, a survival game in this complicated world. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I know you've spoken about f- uh, women's football um, already, but I was just going to ask, um, in the film it says women's football in Ukraine is um, under very bad conditions, and that's what you said now as well. Um, and there are only around 200 professional female players in Ukraine, um, and that most of them, they quit their career before they reach 20 because it's so poorly paid. Um, do you see this situation changing for better or for worse? in Ukraine specifically? To be honest, I don't really see any changes, but women's football is getting bigger in Europe. In France, there are some very good teams. They have the Lyon team, for example, which is a very famous men's football team, but they also have Lyon women's football. We also need to integrate women's football, women's sports, and bring it up to the same level as men's. If we have Dynamo, we could also have a women's Dynamo team. In that way, we would increase the number of people wanting to watch women's football and develop it. Even now, when I spoke to their Atex coach, she said that there are many girls, even from wealthy families, whose parents want them to take up football. So it's coming to us in baby steps, but we need support from the Ministry of Youth and Sports. I don't know. So we need some help. Because really, these girls attend physical education universities, they play football, but after that, they just have to face the real world. So they graduate physical education university and understand that they now need to work and earn money, and football will only earn them small amounts. While at the same time, they will get injuries that will require long periods of rehabilitation. And without substantial financial support, that would be very difficult. In that way, we would at least be able to prevent those girls from quitting the ones who leave for financial reasons.